Okay, everyone. Welcome back to another review, and this time we're going to be taking a look at Halloween 2, directed by Rick Rosenthal, co-written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Okay. <clears throat> Halloween 2 is pretty much an exact continuation of the first movie. Uh, I always prefer Halloween 1 and 2 to be considered as just one big, long epic instead of being two separate movies, but, um... Yeah. Halloween 2. It's not a bad movie, but it, it this is where the series starts to get very uh, start to have a, start to get has a has start to develop its convoluted uh, lore and mythology in a way. Um, in this movie, Halloween Two, we find out we give Michael Myers a motivation, and that of course renders this series problematic for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that. In the first movie, you establish Michael as this unstoppable force of nature with no rhyme or reason. Now we're giving him a reason. And the reason is that Laurie Strode in this movie is revealed to be his long-lost sister. Of course, Halloween 2 was made during the time of The Empire Strikes Back. And john carpenter has attributed this thing to being writer's block and just not knowing what the hell to do and being completely loaded so i don't blame him but yeah it it it, it does create a lot of it does create problems for the rest of the series going forward <clears throat> um but by itself Halloween 2 is it's competently made uh rick rosenthal you know maintains the same, you know, atmosphere of the first movie. Um, his pacing overall, not as good as Carpenter's. Um, Rick Rosenthal's pacing does get clunky in a lot of areas. Um, particularly since this movie has a lot of characters in it, and a, there are, a lot of these characters are very disposable characters. They don't really mean or do anything for the plot. But we spend time with them to develop, or in to the develop them, but um, we really don't need these characters. We just need Loomis. We need Lori. These other throwaway characters are just that. They're very throwaway characters. And this movie takes place primarily inside of a hospital, and a lot of these hospital personnel are just that. They're 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 just cardboard cutouts. Uh, the only one that stood out to me, and the only one that I actually found enjoyable, was the character of Bud. I just like the character of Bud. He has such a snarky asshole attitude to him, you know. I just, lo I just love, it. I just like his quick with comebacks and stuff like that. So Bud, but played by uh, Theo Rossi, is a uh, standout for me. I like his character a lot. Uh, the rest of them are just bland. They're just there. And the character of Jimmy is, he's okay. You know, he doesn't really bother me much. I know a lot of people either like him or hate him. I'm indifferent to him. Um, I think the smarter move would have to go with the character of Ben Tramer since we've established him in the first movie. Just even if by name, we, we still established him. And we knew he had a crush on Lori. I think Ben Tramer being a more central figure in Lori, in this, to this movie with Lori, would have been made much more sense, but whatever. <clears throat> uh, now, I want, to put the I want to put to rest a criticism of this movie. And, this, and the criticism this movie gets is that it's too gory. Or that it's gorier than the first movie, which it is. But... Now, to, to say what's gory and what's not gory is all a matter of personal perspective. To me, gore is excessive violence. Uh, ripping limbs apart, you know, body parts being flown around. To me, that's what gore is. Um, now, this movie has a lot of blood, but the kills are, for the most part, very tasteful. They're not gratuitous. Um... Can they be outlandish? Yeah, sure. Like, you know, like the whole, you know, like a needle going through an eyeball is can be out there. This one scene of Michael dipping this woman's entire, dipping, like, dipping this woman into, like, a hot tub and just melting her face off is extremely gratuitous violent and violent. But, you know, it's not anything that's going to, like, offend you or something like that. So, yeah, I, I think that... This movie does get a bad rap for being too gory, and doesn't get enough credit for being actually tasteful with its score for the most part, and not like 
taking the route of let's say uh, let's say uh, Friday the 13th which I love Friday the 13th don't get me wrong and, and Friday the 13th you know those movies were made to be explicit to be explicit but you have movies that are worse than Friday the 13th like a sleepaway camp or a night or, uh, or the prowler or the or the or the uh, living dead movies which are inherently more gory than this movie could ever wish to be so yeah I uh, I have a main I have a real big problem with with this movie getting uh, that bad the bad reputation that it gets of being too gory when to me the gore in this movie is, is more tastefully done as opposed to the other movies but that's my little rant on that uh, but going back to this movie now of course you know Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis returns uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as Lori Strode doesn't really get a whole lot to do she's mostly comatose for half the movie in a hospital bed her dialogue is limited as all hell I think she has like maybe 10 lines in a whole movie but you know Donald Pleasance Donald Pleasance has a lot to do which is what I like um, we get to see him do a lot of detective work he's working with this new character called Hunt uh, of course Sheriff Brackett once Brackett finds out his daughter Andy is dead he's pretty much gone within the first 20 minutes of the movie and this character of Hunt takes place and I like the character of Hunt I like how Hunt is willing to work with Dr. Loomis to try and stop Michael and to try and stop Michael and put it into the night so I I like the character of Hunt he's pretty cool and I, and I do like the whole relationship that develops between Hunt and Dr. Loomis that mutual you know respect <clears throat> so that was good too um, uh, the cinema Dean, Dean Cundy once again returns as cinematographer. He does a spectacular job as usual. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of shots in this movie that look great, fantastic. There's this one scene where it's very reminiscent of the first movie, where like you got one character who's, who's in his dark room, and then the lighting slowly reveals Michael in a really cool sh before and this is before he sticks the needle into the woman's eye, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I liked the whole scene with the security guard before he dies. I thought that was paced really well and it had a good suspense, a lot of suspense to it. Uh, this movie does have some scary scenes. Um, the main highlight is the big chase at the end between Michael and Maury where he's chasing her all over the hospital. And I like the whole atmosphere of being inside the hospital. It's very confined, very claustrophobic. And to me, confined, claustrophobic places are always more scary in a horror movie because your character can literally be anywhere and you literally have very limited places where you can go because you're in a confined space it's not like being outdoors where you can go anywhere when you're confined your chances of your your chances for hiding and finding places is very limited to where you are so as is as is your weaponry so i thought that was a good idea and i thought that was i thought that we use it to pretty much for the most part to its advantage uh and I also like the big ending where Dr. Loomis exposed the hospital and stuff like that. So, yeah. Overall, um, Halloween 2 is still a good movie. Not as good as number 1, but it's still a solid movie. I think at the end of the day, I'm going to give Halloween 2 a 7 out of 10. I like it. It's pace, The pacing is okay for the most part. Rick Rosenthal is a decent director. The writing, of course, can be very clunky in a lot of areas, especially with the whole, you know, Michael is, uh, Laurie is your sister, the whole Laurie is your sister thing. And a lot of the characters are very thorough, and you don't care about any of them. So, yeah, I think 7 out of 10 is a very appropriate grade for the follow-up to Halloween 1. So, yeah, those are my overall thoughts on Halloween 2. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.